It's game day eve. BYU headed to Eugene, Oregon to take on the Oregon Ducks. What will it take for BYU to spring another win and keep me growing this beard? We'll talk about it on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. Our title sponsor today is our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online has got you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That's Bet Online where the game starts. All right, a lot to get to ahead on today's show, but real quick, we're very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto around these parts is your team every day, and as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Uh, also, by way of introduction, my name is Jake. I work for the KSL Sports Zone out there in Salt Lake City and absolutely love uh, moonlighting here as your host, talking all things BYU, because my goal here on this podcast, simply stated, is to make you the smartest BYU fans in the room and this is your little secret, giving you all the news and notes you need to know about when it comes to the Cougars. All right, a lot to get to on today's show. We're going to catch up with BYU fullback slash tight end slash H-back slash do everything uh, stud Mason Wake. We'll get to that here in a moment. But we also got to start off today getting you ready for BYU in Oregon. Uh, kickoff in that game set for 1.30 p.m. Mountain Time on Fox. Uh, 12.30 for those of you up there in Eugene or on the West Coast who will be tuning into this. This is a big game, folks. And the thing about this is I'm, I'm I'm not going to bury the lead here. I am terrified of the unknown when it comes to games like this. Because what I mean by that is that Oregon, to me, is an enigma. If you watched yesterday's show or listened to it uh, with uh, uh, Spencer McLaughlin of Locked On Ducks, my first question to him about Oregon is, Spencer, who is this Oregon team? Are they the team that got absolutely obliterated in Atlanta against the defending national champions in Georgia? Or are they more of the team that put up 70 points on Eastern Washington a week ago? And he told me, Jake, I don't have a good feel for this. Uh, he kind of came off a little more negative than I thought he would be on the Ducks, but he still thinks they're capable of carving out a win. And I very much think that Oregon is capable of winning this game, but like, uh, well, not, not like, but unlike where we went into USF and also Baylor the last two weeks, I felt like it had a fairly decent pulse on both of those squads. USF maybe a little less so than Baylor, but I went into those games thinking, okay, I have an idea of what they're going to do here. With Oregon, I really have no feel on this. And a number of you out there who have uh, been interacting with me, uh, talking with my good friend Robbie Huckvell, among others, saying that this feels a lot like BYU in 1990 going to Autzen when BYU was ranked number four in the country. They were 4-0 and at that point. Ty Detmer obviously led BYU to that upset win in Miami earlier on uh, to kick off the season. And then they went up to Autzen and uh, were slipping and sliding all over that wet turf on the AstroTurf up there in Eugene and lost uh, uh, just a stunner, 32-16 to to the Oregon Ducks. The Ducks at that time were unranked in this matchup. They are ranked. They're ranked number 25. BYU, as I mentioned, was number four then. They're number 20. 12 now, uh, but I don't th necessarily think that that game is indicative of what's coming for BYU. I think this BYU squad is a veteran squad, and there's one thing that I think uh, Uriah Leatawa may have put it out there on, on social media. This goes back, I think, to maybe when BYU beat Baylor. It might have been after the USF game. It was, it was after Baylor because of the ranked win. And he said, guys, you got to get this out of your mind that BYU is the underdog in these matchups. He said, since 2018, there's been a mindset uh, kind of flip for the BYU football program. And I, I admit I'm kind of stuck in the BYU is always going to be an underdog type uh, mentality just because of the history of BYU football. Think about it. They have traditionally been outside the power structure in college football. They are going to be inside the so-called uh, Big Five next year, the Power Five conferences when they join the Big 12. But BYU's always kind of been this outsider lurking on the fringes and every so often will spring up and put together one of those incredible seasons. 
maybe we uh, out there that watch, cover, and just root for BYU in general need to understand that Kalani Satake has kind of changed the mindset of this squad. This is a team that goes into these games thinking, no, there's no chance. We're, they don't go into them thinking, well, maybe we can win this one. They go in fully expecting to win. And I'm not saying that other squads in BYU history didn't have that mindset, but I think under Kalani Satake, this is a team, this is a program that is a veteran unit that is more than capable of handling their business and going to Autzen and winning this game. Are they going to win it? Well, you have to wait for a minute, and I'll give you my prediction as we round out today's show. But I think the biggest thing is I just don't necessarily have a great feel for what we're going to get from Oregon. Now, with regards to what BYU needs to do, in my opinion, to win this game, first off, you got to have a better rushing output in this matchup. Oregon's got a pretty good front seven, but nowhere near the level of what Baylor was. The Baylor front uh, for B- defense, Defensively, especially on that defensive line, maybe the best BYU faces all season long. I'm dead serious about that. That that defensive front, that defensive front seven in particular for Baylor is absolutely elite. They're going to win games simply due to the just impenetrable nature of that front. Speaking of the Bears, uh, Oregon's pretty good. Uh, Noah Sewell, linebacker, is one of the best linebackers out there. Uh, they Justin Flo, who's kind of his compatriot out there at linebacker. They've got a decent front seven for Oregon, but BYU's got to put out more than 89 yards rushing in this. This game. They've got to go into Austin and hope to have a pretty balanced offensive attack. I'd be more than content if BYU were to go into this game, rush for 200 yards, Jaron Hall passes for 150, and BYU carves out a win, moves to 3-0, and and potentially is inside the top 10 next week as they welcome in Wyoming. That, that to me, would scream everything I want to see. So I, I, I think BYU's got to go into this game endeavoring, and we talked with Clark Barrington earlier this week on his weekly appearance about, he said that we need to be better running the football. BYU has to have a better performance. You can't win this game, I feel like, completely on the arm of Jaron Hall. Granted, they did essentially do that last week against Baylor, so maybe I'm up in the night with my assessment there. Other thing is, take care of the football. This is a game that you have to make sure that on the road, you don't make mistakes that make it easy for the home team. Autzen is one of the true home field advantages in all of college football. Lavelle Edwards Stadium is a very similar type environment for BYU. That place will be rocking. It's going to be loud. It'll be raucous. And BYU's got to go in there and not give easy points away to Oregon. Can't fumble the football. Can't tip footballs up where Oregon can pick them off. You've got to avoid all of those major mistakes because in this type of a game, and our friends over at Bet Online, who we'll talk more about here in a moment, have Oregon as a three and a half point favorite. This game really rests potentially on one to three plays. Granted, a lot of football games out there, if you really want to boil it down, there's usually between five to ten plays in any given football game that seem to prove to be the difference. I know it's so weird to boil it down to that, but in many ways, that's how it goes. So I get the, the, uh, uh, the, not fear. I like fear. Fear is probably a good word. I, I get why people might be fearful that BYU's got a little bit of a big head walking into this matchup, going on the road to Autzen, feeling like, hey, we're the BMOC. We're going to go in there and handle our business. But maybe at the same time, that's BYU's chief strength right now. This is a veteran unit. Jaron Hall, he is about as cool a cu- cucumber as you will find out there playing football. He is having the time of his life. It seems like he's just put it all together. Now, with regards to the wide receivers, my friends, many of you are probably saying, Jake, what, what, what's going on here? Well, here's, here's the thing. I don't expect Puka Nakua and or Gunnar Romney to play at this point. I, I've given up trying to find out of uh, my practice insiders. They're as baffled as I am. Uh, the biggest thing is, is once the doctors clear these guys, they will be out there on the football field. Could one or both of them be cleared in time for tomorrow's game? Sure. I, I, I could very easily see that happening. I'm not betting on it, though. That I, I just don't see it happening. Now, let me also add this caveat. If they don't play in this game... Why in the world would you throw them out there against Wyoming? Why would you throw them out there against Utah State the next two games? If they miss this game against Oregon, do not plan, and this is just me speaking once again, do not plan on seeing either Governor Romney or Puka Nakua until Notre Dame. I know that's disappointing to hear, but I very easily could see that happening. Our good friend Mojo uh, out there uh, protecting our country as a fighter pilot for the United States Air Force actually asked me this question, Jake. Jake, what is going to be what's going to take for BYU to have a breakout uh, tight end performance? Well, I actually thought the tight end performance breakout was going to come last week against Baylor, but I probably was a little too hasty in that evaluation because Oregon doesn't necessarily know BYU's personnel as well as Baylor does. Jeff Grimes, 
Eric Mateos, they know BYU's tight ends. And the way Baylor was going about defending things, they were going to make it tough for guys like Dellen Holker, Isaac Rex, Mason Wake, who we'll hear from him in just a moment. They were going to make it tough for them to make an impact. Well, insert Chase Roberts, and he comes out as the star breakout performer of that game. Could this be a matchup where Oregon goes in saying, okay, number 27, he is he ain't doing what he did against Baylor against us? Well, if that's the case, then Dallin Holker, Isaac Rex, Mason Wake, it's your time to shine. I think this is a game where they could potentially really show what they're capable of. Now, the other thing about this with tight ends, there are quarterbacks who think tight ends are, well, not think. There are guys who are very, very comfortable throwing to wide receivers. There are guys who are very, very comfortable throwing to tight ends. It's kind of a, it's like a a preference thing, I guess is the easiest way to say this. And I think that Zach Wilson, his breakout performance really was due in part to the tight end unit, in particular Isaac Rex during 2020, being a a steady safety valve slash star, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but he really broke out. They both broke out together. Now, since Jaron Hall has taken over as the quarterback, BYU's tight end production has gone down a little bit. That's also due in part to the glut of talent BYU's had at wide receiver, but at the same time, this is just my observation. Jaron Hall seems far more comfortable throwing to his receivers and pushing the ball downfield, and the tight ends maybe aren't necessarily uh, his preferred target. That's not a bad thing. Let me. I'm, I'm not trying to say that he needs to be looking for these tight ends, but in a game like this, if Chase Roberts is going to get bracketed by Oregon, they're going to say these wide receivers are not going to beat us. We're going to trust our cornerbacks to lock them up. Well, if that's the case, I would hope that Isaac Rex, Dallin Holker, Ethan Erickson, Mason Wake, the, the entire group of the tight ends are saying, hey, get us the ball. Let us do the damage in this game. That would be fantastic to see. Now, defensively, real quick, the biggest thing for BYU is you got to avoid, and I guess in many ways, hope for a, one of the down Bo Nix performances. His career at Auburn, and obviously so far at Oregon, has been one of ups and downs. He has games he looks absolutely brilliant. There are performances from Bo Nix during his time at Auburn where he could have beaten any team in the country. There are also other performances from his time at Auburn, and trust me, I watch enough college football to have seen this, that he can lose any game himself at the same time. It's kind of the... Jekyll and Hyde nature of how Bo Nix plays the quarterback position. You got to hope in this game that he's not at that peak level in this matchup if you're BYU. I know hoping and that type of stuff is is kind of a foolhardy option, but in some ways that's what you're looking at here. I think BYU should take a lot of confidence from what they did against Baylor. This is another good offensive line that's going to be intent on making BYU break. They're going to try and break the Cougars' defensive front. Well, what you did against Baylor, you got to have again against Oregon in this matchup. Oregon would love nothing more than to control control this game in on the ground. And if they can do that, obviously they will be intent to run it down your throat all game long. BYU has to take what they did against Baylor, bottle it up, and take it to Autzen with them as they take on the Oregon Ducks. And I think if they get some pressure on Bo Nix, rattle him early, I think BYU could find themselves on the way to a victory. But we'll give you my prediction here in just a moment. I want to let you guys hear a little bit from Mason Wake. Uh, I had a great conversation with him at practice earlier this week. Had a really, really interesting take on what's going on uh, in terms of the expectations for BYU from the team itself versus what outside expectations may have been. We'll get to that here momentarily. First, though, a word on our friends at Bet Online. As I mentioned, they are currently favoring Oregon by three and a half points. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including every week's worth of games, both in the NFL and college football, right now online. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. It is also the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events beyond football, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing and golf head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action that's there that's bet online where the game starts Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. All right, as promised, I'm going to get to our conversation I had earlier this week with Mason Wake, a guy who is, uh, I think, one of the... How do I say this? The, the, the more free thinkers or I, I guess free speakers in a way for BYU football, he says what's on his mind. He He's not afraid to back it up, obviously, with his play on the football field. He's been a, an absolute stud during his time at BYU coming in from Lone Peak High School. Always enjoy catching up with Mason and had a great opportunity to catch up with him. We started off talking about the Baylor win and what he took away from that big upset over the Baylor Bears. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's like a, a season, like that's a do or die type of game in the season. And you always want to go out there and win, especially in front of your home crowd. And uh, last year we were a little unprepared. We were kind of a lot of guys were dinged up. Some guys didn't play, but um, this year, too, a lot of guys didn't play. But we just mentally just we just believed that we could go out there and win and we can hang with anyone. And then that's just our mentality now. How was that crowd compared to other home crowds you've experienced? So that one was probably number one, like okay. on like fourth down, third down, when it'd be a little loud, and then they tried to audible, and it just got even louder. Like it just gives you chills, and like you just look to the guy next to you, and you're like, this play is about to be loud when it's like third or fourth down. But yeah, I mean, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's a true home field advantage. Getting ready to go to Oregon this week. Obviously, they're another talented defense. Obviously, what what do you see from film on them? Yeah, I mean, they're really fast. Their DBs are pretty good. Their edge rushers are really good. And, um, but I think we match up well, and I think we'll go out there and have a good game plan, and we'll play good. And uh, that'll be another um, environment where it's going to be pretty loud. Like all week, we've been practicing with uh, the speakers blaring in our ears, being prepared. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they got good home field advantage. We're obviously underdogs for this game, but we don't, we don't see it that way. We just want to go out there and just do our thing and see what happens. Do you enjoy playing in environments like you're expecting with Autzen? Yes, like that, it just makes, that's why college football is so fun. NFL is not like that, like high school football is a version of that, but not, not quite as much. But yeah, I mean, like it just gives me chills thinking about going and playing in the Veladors. So yeah, I mean, it's just, it's fun. When it comes to, because Baylor last week went like double clap and you, there's obviously silent counts and that type of stuff. Is there a preferred method for you to like know, hey, this is what we're going on? Or do you, do you, just, you just operate with however they decide to go about it? So, I mean, they have, there's an operation that we have, and, uh, I mean, it's honestly, when you're out there, you can't hear anything, so I'm just watching the ball. Like, I think that's what most guys are doing is just, <laughs> it's between the center and the quarterback and then just reacting to other people moving, so. You guys, obviously, on offense, you, there's wrinkles every year. And the, the pass back on Saturday, how long has that been in the playbook? So that's been, we've been practicing that for like two years, I want to say. Oh, so it's been yeah, we've been doing this for a while and like it worked every time in practice and they finally called it and I looked at all my teammates, I'm like, uh, is this about to work? And I mean, it was a gutsy call and it ended up being pretty awesome. So, Is that the fun part about what Coach A-Rod does? Is he, he's, he's not afraid to pull those out when he needs to. Yeah, I mean, that's just like A-Rod's so creative. All the guys that he has doing the plays, him and Fessy and Matt Mitchell, and they're all just so creative. And it's just every single day we go into meetings like, all right, we're going to run this. That's going to be fun. And, like, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just fun being around those guys and seeing their creativity and um, their leadership um, and trusting in us. And, uh, yeah, it's just been fun. Have you ever suggested a crazy play and been like, hey, coach, let's run something like this for a fullback or H-back well, in your spot? I mean – I think it's everyone just throwing in plays. Like, we'll see, like, NFL teams or other college football teams. That's who we're stealing it from. So whenever, like, this last week, uh, the first game of the NFL season, we saw the Bills run that play with uh, the receiver number 13, and we all sent it into the chat to, like, we should run this. Like, it's just when you have coaches like A-Rod and all those other guys, it's just kind of how it's just kind of how it is. Like, you just, you just show what you want to do, and um, they listen to you. They, it's just fun. Well, I, I, and I can remember, I think it was against Houston, there's the famous underhand flip from, from Zach to you yeah. for that touchdown. I think it was a Kansas City Chiefs play, right? Yeah, we, we stole it right from Kansas City, and Patrick <laughs> Mahomes actually, like, quote tweeted it on Twitter, and so that was pretty cool, but, yeah, it was that was fun. Awesome. Uh, last thing for me, how two games into the season, you feel like this team's where you expected it to be at this point? Yeah, I think we expected um, us to be in this position, but I don't think anyone else did. Maybe even some BYU fans didn't think that. But, I mean, we just knew uh, going through, like, the summer workouts and just PRPs and everything that we've been doing that we've, we've built up and we've this is who we are and we, we believe in it. And um, no matter who we're playing, we're going out there and kick their ass. And, I mean, I don't know if you can put it in, but, I mean, that's our mentality. We just want to be physical and uh, just know that we, we know that we should be there. So, Awesome. Mason, thanks for the time. Thank you. We're going to go out there and kick their ass. Now that is a motto I can get behind, my friends. Pardon the crass language if you've got young ones around listening, but I love Mason Wake. I, I, I've got like this, just this, this undying uh, just belief that this dude, 
He is kind of the epitome of, I think, what BYU's offense is all about. A guy who came in as a walk-on, uh, made good on the bet on himself, is now a scholarship player at BYU, probably going to have an opportunity to play in the NFL. I, if I'm an NFL team, I'd look at him as a guy who can do everything on the football field, play special teams, fullback, H-back. He, to me, is what the new era of NFL quote-unquote fullbacks are supposed to be. Versatile, capable of contributing in multiple ways, but... That mentality, we're going to go out there and kick their ass. I'm not taking that out. I, I'm Frankly, I might use that as like the, the motto for this podcast. I love, I loved that quote. So a huge ups to Mason Wake and looking forward to seeing BYU take on the Oregon Ducks tomorrow and hopefully watching BYU kick their ass. That... <laughs> I, I, when he said that, you got to get you saw kind of the side eye. He's like, "You want to take that?" I'm like, "No, I'm not taking that out. We're leaving that in there." I, I, Mason's a guy. We I think it was was it Utah State a couple years ago. I had no idea going into an interview with him. I, he just finally had broken out. I'm like talking with him. He said, "Yeah, Utah State. It might have been Boise State. They ghosted me on the recruiting trail." He grew up a big Boise State fan. Was frustrated they didn't give him an opportunity to go play for his dream school, and he was all. All about going and showing. I think it was Utah. No, I, now I think about it. It was Utah State. He's like, we're gonna go up to Logan. I'm gonna show them what they missed out on by just ghosting me in the in the recruiting process. So, always, 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 always. Uh, the Bronco quote: "Love, love, continued loves." Mason Wake, go out there and kick their ass. That. <laughs> <laughs> made my day. All right, coming up here in just a minute, give you my uh, final thoughts, prediction for the Oregon game. Also get you my uh, picks for this week in college football. And we also finally know how BYU women's basketball is going to open the season after South Carolina ghosted them uh, under the pretense of the racist allegations at the BYU volleyball match. We'll talk about all of that as we continue on right here on Locked on Cougars. All right, before we go here on today's show, let's catch you up on everything else going on in BYU sports. As mentioned, the BYU women's basketball schedule is out. They're going to open the season as they take on a Utah, not Utah State, Colorado State, excuse me, in their uh, season opener. It'll be on November 8th on a Tuesday. Obviously, the game uh, BYU is supposed to open up with was a road game against defending national champion South Carolina, but Don Staley, uh, the Gamecocks head coach, uh, canceled that series against BYU, saying that she didn't want to take chances of potential racism type stuff happening with BYU. Uh, Coach Staley, let's just let's say it how it is. You didn't want to make the return trip to BYU next season, and this was an easy way for you to get out of that game while at the same time taking a side swipe at BYU as an institution. Can we can we acknowledge that? Maybe we can't. But at the same time, uh, BYU, once again, they'll open up against Colorado State on November 8th out there in Fort Collins at Moby Arena. Uh, BYU will host Westminster in an exhibition uh, game. That'll be on October 27th on Thursday. Uh, game times for both of those games have not been announced yet. Actually, I think the entire schedule for BYU. Yeah, uh, TBA on uh, game times. BYU's home opener in the regular season will be Saturday, November 12th when they host Montana State. And then they got a huge one. Oklahoma uh, is coming to the BYU on Tuesday, November 15th. So a very, very fast start for a BYU women's basketball, obviously under the under new direction of a new head coach uh, with Coach, uh, uh, now I'm blanking on, uh, Coach Whiting, duh. I wanted to say Coach Judkins. I'm like, that's not right. Coach Whiting, uh, Amber Whiting taking over as the BYU women's basketball head coach. So a very solid schedule out the gate for BYU women's basketball, and obviously we'll be tracking them throughout this upcoming season. Now, a couple other notes before we go here. BYU obviously getting ready to take on Oregon. I, Folks, I am excited for this game. As I said, I don't really have a great feel for what to expect from the Oregon Ducks in this matchup, which is in many ways it's kind of terrifying to me because I, I'm a guy who I, I I I think I've got a pretty good track record of this. I go by my gut. That, that's kind of how I've gone about predicting stuff when it comes to BYU. And my gut tells me in the, in this game it's going to be tight. And I expected that from Baylor last week, but I had a lot of confidence that BYU could go in and win this game, uh, win that game against Baylor. I had a Pretty good feeling that BYU is going to take care of business against USF. Did I see a 28-0 lead at the end of one quarter against USF? Not necessarily, but I felt like BYU had a pretty good shot to go 2-0. Now, this matchup, man, my gut is telling me it's going to be close, but I think the BYU, the way BYU operates, kind of the veteran nature of this BYU football program, leads me to think that they're going to go in there and they're going to be able to handle whatever is thrown at them, no matter if it's a good Bo Nix game, an awful Bo Nix game, B, uh, Oregon's defense all of a sudden shows up and decides it wants to play ball because it's had its struggles early on this season. 
But I think BYU is capable of going in there and winning. And as I said yesterday, I kind of felt like a 31 to 24 scoreline. That was on the, we did the Locked On crossover show with Locked On Duts. I thought 31 24 for BYU is kind of where I was sitting. And I'm still very content with that 31 points for BYU in this game. I think they're capable of getting over the 30 point threshold. But I've got this feeling that BYU's defense is maybe that, the quote is from Coach Tuiaki, the no name defense. And I actually love that, that they're embracing kind of being that no-name group that BYU fans, we've all kind of ripped on them over the past year or so, and they had a very, very good performance against Baylor. If they can take that on the road and they can translate that once again uh, in this game, I actually think BYU pulls away in this one. So here's my prediction uh, for this game. I've revamped it since yesterday, thinking about it. I've got BYU 31, Oregon 20. I think BYU covers, obviously, uh, Oregon being the favorite going into this game, but I think BYU wins this one, and then at that point you're 3-0 and and potentially, what, sitting on the doorstep of the top 10, inside the top 10, depending on how the week plays out in college football, could be some very, very fun times as BYU gets ready to welcome in Wyoming a week from Saturday night. Now, other picks this week, I do this each week on the show, uh, I'm about 500 on the season. Frankly, I'm not doing so hot with my picks, but uh, first one, obviously, BYU's arch rival University of Utah welcoming in San Diego State. They got Utah as 21-point favorites in this one. I'm a little bit stunned that that the point spread is that high. I think Utah wins, but I do think San Diego State covers. I think San Diego State's ability to run the football and Utah's inability to slow down run games, particularly against Florida, is going to hurt them in this one. I think San Diego State covers, but I do think Utah gets the win. Next one, uh, we've got uh, Oklahoma and Nebraska. Obviously, Nebraska firing Scott Frost, uh, uh, Mickey Joseph taking over as the interim head coach. they got number 6 Oklahoma coming to a Memorial Stadium there in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, OU is an 11-point favorite. I think Oklahoma is going to cover this. I, Nebraska's moved the ball fine on offense this season. It's actually frankly not been their problem. It's been defense has been their issue. Uh, they've allowed leads to slip, all that type of stuff. I think Nebraska will battle in this one. They'll get that little bit of a bump with a new coach and wanting to go out there and make Mickey Joseph look good, but I think Oklahoma eventually pulls away and covers that 11 point spread. Up next, I've got Ole Miss, Georgia Tech. This is an interesting one to me because Ole Miss is going to Atlanta to take on Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is so weird to me because they They've, uh, trying to, they've changed their offensive identity. For many, many years under Paul Johnson, they were a triple option offense. Jeff Collins came, to, came in, completely overhauled the roster, trying to get it back to more of a traditional offense, and it's just been a slog. Ole Miss is a 16.5-point favorite in this, and the quarterback system that Lane Kiffin is throwing out there right now, Jackson Dark, Jackson Dart, excuse me, the former Corner Canyon stud slash Roy High School stud, uh, he's there kind of competing with Luke Altmyer still for the starting quarterback job. Uh, Dart is uh, 336 yards and three touchdowns this year, but Ole Miss is a 16.5-point favorite. I think Georgia Tech covers that on their home field. I think Ole Miss ultimately wins the game. But we'll see how it plays out there. Now, a couple other games I, I want to throw in here in terms of the picks. Michigan State going to Washington. Folks, I think the Huskies are really sneaky good right now. I, I'm not 100% convinced that they're like world beaters, but I think the head coaching issues they've had the past two years have really held down the Huskies. They're 2-0, and looking very, very dangerous on offense. Michigan State is going a two Husky Stadium there in Seattle. Washington is a three-point favorite. So on a neutral field, this is probably a pick em. Give me Washington to cover, and I think they, they go to 3-0. and I think Michigan State, maybe a little bit of a paper tiger with Mel Tucker. Not to say that Michigan State's a bad team, but I don't necessarily think they're the 11th best team in the country, and if they lose, that gives BYU with a win a spot to move up already out of the way right there. Now, final few picks here. UTSA at number 21, Texas. I think there's going to be a little of a hangover effect for Texas in this game. The Longhorns are anywhere between a 12 and a 13 point favorite, depending on where you look. Our friends over at a Bet Online have them as a 12 and a half point favorite. I think UTSA covers this, but I think Texas ultimately gets the win. Uh, they move to 2-1, and one, and the hype train for Sark continues to build, but not, not a bad thing necessarily. And then Miami, Texas A&M. I am very intrigued by this game. Obviously, Texas A&M getting upset last week by App State on their home field. Miami coming to Kyle Field. Give me the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, a and is actually a six-point favorite in this game, stunningly enough, as the 24th ranked team against the number 13 ranked Hurricanes. Uh, I'm a guy who's a sucker. I, I've been a big fan of Miami my entire life. It's just one of those teams I've always kind of latched on to. I think Miami goes in there, gets the win, and covers the spread. And then the final game I'm picking is Fresno State USC. USC is number seven in the country, similar to Washington. I think they're still being a little bit underrated. I think USC is actually pretty darn good, folks. I'm not really ready to say that they're college football playoff good, but 
if they continue to win, they'll be right on that track. Uh, USC number seven in the country, welcoming in Fresno State. USC an 11 and a half point favorite. I actually think USC blows the doors off Fresno State here. I think they cover that spread easily and they pull away in the end and they're all of a sudden 3-0. and And I think more and more we're going to start hearing, hey, did Lincoln Riley turn around USC in one year? Well, very well could be the case, folks. You, I, I, similar to Miami, USC is a team I've always liked my entire life. I, I don't know how to describe it. They're teams that I think any of you out there uh, have looked at and probably have been fans of growing up. Miami and USC are two of those teams. Jake Hatch, outside of growing up as a, as a BYU guy, I had USC gear, I had Miami gear. There, there are teams you latch on to. Call me a front runner, but but those are two teams I've always kind of stuck with throughout my entire life, and I think they both get the wins. So those are my picks for this week. I'd love to hear your guys' predictions for the game against uh, Oregon for BYU. Send them in via social media, Locked On Cougars on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Send them to me uh, on my Twitter feed, Jacob C. Hatch, or email us, LockedOnBYU at gmail.com is the email address. Would love to hear from you guys, or drop them in the comment section uh, of YouTube if you happen to be watching this on YouTube as well. I'd love to hear your guys' predictions. And, of course, we'll be back uh, tomorrow night as we recap this one with a postcast edition of the show. Very interested to see how this plays out. Like I said, I don't necessarily have a great feel for what to expect from Oregon, but I am banking. I guess my, my, my confidence in BYU is simply due to the fact that BYU, they're a veteran squad. They handled their business nicely against, uh, against Baylor uh, in the midst of all kinds of uh, issues that were kind of facing them, especially overcoming two missed game-winning kicks. That could have crushed this team. They overcame it all, got that win. I think they can bottle, bottle that up and translate it on the road, and hopefully they do, and they're 3-0, and and suddenly we're talking about a top-10-ranked BYU squad. How fun would that be as they get ready to welcome in Wyoming? So once again, we'll have a postcast edition after the game uh, tomorrow night for you guys, and of course, throughout the upcoming week, we'll have our reaction uh, with film review, and then obviously turn our attention to the Wyoming Cowboys as they come to BYU to renew an old Mountain West slash WAC uh, rivalry that's been going for many, many years, but obviously has been uh, off for many, many years since BYU left the Mountain West Conference in 2010. All right, that's going to do it for us. Have a great day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Make sure you guys make Locked On Big 12 your second listen of the day. Uh, make it uh, part of your just your listening repertoire. Uh, that's what I love about that show is it gets you ready uh, with everything going on in the Big 12 Conference. Josh Neighbors is a dear friend I've gotten to know over the last year plus and does a great job covering all things Big 12. Get that wherever you get your podcast for free or on YouTube just like this show. All right, that'll do it for us. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the game tomorrow and come back for that postcast edition shortly after it goes final. That That'll do it for us. Have a great rest of your day one more time. I think it's the third time I've mentioned that, but this has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.